David, and David. Richard woke up early in the morning, his mind buzzing with thoughts of his longtime friend, David Schweizer. They had been friends for over four decades, and their friendship had been one filled with synchronicities and shared experiences. As Richard logged into his computer, he was surprised to find a message from David Schweizer waiting for him. It was another perfect example of their connection, a delightful synchronicity. Both Richard and David had started their journey in different cities, living separate lives until they both found themselves in South Miami during the 80s. It was there that they discovered their mutual interest in pyramid kits and their shared connection to Ramtha and their respective interests in building these kits. Mind you, Richard's wife Barbara owned her pyramid-making company before she met Richard. Now David and my wife Barbara had a mutual friend in Castle Rock, Arizona. Barbara went to visit Jim about three times. Each time Jim Mahew would say you just missed David and David Husson, another friend of mine. It was during this time that David, along with his friends John Bayer and Harry Bartz, introduced Richard to Marfu's tapes. This introduction led Richard to a job working for Shirley MacLaine on her nationwide tour. Little did he know that this job would lead him to some of the most influential people in his life. Richard flew from Miami to Los Angeles to start his job and was invited to attend a Marfu event with his new colleagues. Little did he know that this event would change his life forever. He met Marfu and Zoran to incredible spiritual teachers who would guide him on his path. This meeting was another instance of synchronicity. David was also present during this time, attending various events and shows. The two friends would often take walks in the hills of Pacific Palisades, deep in conversation about the spiritual teachings that had captured their hearts. One day, David invited Richard to join a pyramid project in Sedona, Arizona. Excited by the prospect, Richard agreed and soon found himself in the breathtaking landscape of Sedona. David and David were there to welcome him, and they introduced him to another remarkable individual, Zoran. Richard quickly became enamored with Zoran's unique teaching style, full of games and laughter. Zoran was an entity known as Logos, personifying the power of the word. His teachings resonated deeply with Richard, and he found himself immersed in a community of laughter and joy. During one of their meetings, Zoram revealed that Richard and his wife Barbara were both students at a school called Nucleus on another planet. They were learning about the power of the mind and the mysteries of the atom. Richard was astounded by this revelation, feeling a deep connection to Zoran and the teachings of Nucleus. Zoran also hinted that Richard would soon meet the woman of his dreams. Intrigued by this prophecy, Richard had a dream in which he met Barbara, his future wife. The very next month, Richard found himself in a friend's house, and Barbara walked in. He recognized her immediately, playing it cool as he knew that destiny was at play. Their meeting was the beginning of a beautiful love story. Zoran not only taught Richard about the power of laughter and joy, but also shared techniques for connecting with his inner self. He explained that life was meant to be fun and humorous, not a struggle or battle. Through Zoran's teachings, Richard gained a new perspective on life, one filled with laughter and joy. As Richard and David continued their journey together, they marveled at the synchronicities that had brought them closer. They saw their friendship as an example of how bringing heaven to earth could create a true paradise. Meditation and a connection to their inner selves were pivotal in their pursuit of happiness and fulfillment. And thus, the story of Richard and David, intertwined through synchronicities and shared spiritual experiences, continued to unfold, guided by their unwavering friendship laughter and love for life.